I am so grateful that you've decided to join us here on this Tuesday Bible study. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful again for the blessings of this Tuesday night when we get the opportunity to open up your word and pray that you would bless us with your presence for you ask us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so today we begin a Bible study in the book of Romans. Remember, we've been in Acts and it's been all these stories about the witness of the early church that we looked at during this season of Easter. We're in Pentecost right now. Right now, when we look at the color green, that means that God is asking you to grow in your relationship with God. My concern, when we turn to a book like Romans, Romans is an abused passage of Scripture, or chapter, or book of Scripture. Because so often it's used in a legalistic fashion to bash people over the head about what they need to do and what they need to believe, and it's truly an unfaithful use of the book of Romans. And so we're kind of smack dab right in the middle. We're dropped right in the middle of this passage. So I want to try to give a little bit of background as we go in the book of Romans. But when we look at the lesson, let me start by reading it to you. I'm going to try to break this down because you need to understand what Paul was discussing prior to this. If you start with Romans chapter 1, one of the things that Paul wants to impress upon people is that there is absolutely nothing that anyone can ever do to have a relationship with God, to earn a relationship with God. And so we, the big punchline is, it is by grace through faith that one receives the gift of salvation. It's like a relationship with a parent. You don't become a child in the family on the day that you make a confession. I'm now in the Jones family. I embrace the Jones family as my own. Oh, you're now our child. That's not what happens. Paul is trying to convince people that the way it works in a family is how the child is born. The father and mother embrace the child. The child eventually comes to a point in their life where they embrace the family values. However, it's not the embracing of the family values by the child that earns that child a place in the family. There's nothing a person can do to become a part of a family. It's a gift of God's grace. Okay? When we become a part of God's family, it's because God has accepted us in. Not because it's something that we've done. This is really important to understand today's lesson. So we're going to skip all the way up ahead to Romans chapter 8, but you have to keep that in your brain, all right? Because otherwise you will take this passage out of its context and use it for things that it's not intended to be used for. If you don't remember the foundation that Paul has set in the first few chapters of the book of Romans. Okay, so with that in mind, let me read to you Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. Okay, so I want to start with that word debtors. I actually, I actually used this uh, illustration on Sunday as a part of our, our lesson. Um, I remember about seven, eight years ago, my mother called me. And she was concerned about some things that happened in our childhood. We had my stepfather that was brought into our family was a, a rough individual that beat the living daylights out of me and my brothers and uh, treated us like rubbish and uh, called us all sorts of names. And, you know, I have no doubt that my mother was a part of, you know, she, yes, yeah, she brought him into the family. I think she felt guilty about that. But also there's that guilt and also that uh, she's brought into that abusive situation too, if you understand what I mean. And so it was, it was tough for her. She didn't know what to do and she felt caught as well. And so now here we are years later, and she's feeling guilty about this. And, and I get that. I get that. And she called me one day and wanted to make a confession to me of these things, about the guilt that she felt for opening us uh, children up to this situation and so forth. And, I, and she said, I just felt really awful about that, and I'm so sorry, and I hope you'll forgive me, and on, on, on. And, 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 and I think it was important for her to do that. 
But I said to her, Mom, I'm going to tell you something that's really important to understand. I'm at peace with all of this, and I've made some peace with all this, but the one thing you have to understand about my relationship with you is I am always a debtor to you. Because you gifted me with life. No matter what it was that happened in my past, you gifted me with life, and I am always indebted to you for that. I will always be. He said, well, I'm not asking for anything. I said, I know that. And that's a wonderful thing about relationships with one another. The person who is the, the father, the mother, they don't count the cost of the college education that they put their kids through. Or the days and nights that they stayed up watching to make sure their child would still continue to be breathing the next day if they suffered from some type of lung disease. Or was there when they scraped their knees, or was there when they crashed the car, or whatever else they were there for, okay? All of the things of that, per that child's life. You don't count the cost when you're a parent. But as a child, you look and you realize, I'm always a debtor to my mom and my dad because of everything that they've done for me. Now, parents don't hold to you account for that. God certainly doesn't either. But Paul is trying to remind us that you're a debtor. We could never pay God back for what God has done for us. So, we are debtors, Paul says. Not to the flesh. Uh, there's, there's a particular um, Greek word that's used for that, sarx, uh, flesh. And that can have several different meanings or connotations. Now, we oftentimes think about that you know, flesh, and we associate that with sin. But flesh, by the way, and this again is the English translation of that, is not equivalent to sin. And I don't want you to hear Paul saying that right now. See, this is the problem, I think, where this passage is used for, oh, he's saying, don't be enslaved to sin. That's not what Paul is saying. Don't be enslaved into materialistic things. This body and the things of this world, okay? We're going to come back to why and what particular is concerned is. Listen to what it is. So don't live according to the flesh. What does he mean by that? Don't live according to the flesh. Don't trust in the things of this world. Don't trust the United States government to provide everything for you to make sure that righteousness and justice is done and that the poor are fed because the government is going to let you down. This is what Paul is trying to say. Don't trust the labors of your hands because remember, we're debtors to God, okay? We're debtors to God. Don't trust the labors of your hands that they are going to somehow get you into heaven because how do we get into heaven again? By the gift of God. This is what he's referring to when he's talking about the flesh. Not sin in this case, but don't trust the labors of your hands to provide everything for you to earn your way into heaven. Don't trust it. But that doesn't mean that you should sit there and not do anything. See, this is where he makes the turn. So when you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you try to get into heaven by the works of your hands you will die. Again, he's not talking about sin. He's just talking about trusting in the materialistic nature of this world, the efforts that you put into this life. Somehow being a good person is going to get me to heaven. You're a debtor. Don't trust in your works of your hands, the flesh. If you trust in the works of your hands, what do he say? You will die, he goes on. But... If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Okay, did you hear that? So he again already pointed out, this is not what he's talking about. He's talking about the deeds that we do every single day that we think makes us good people and earns us a place in heaven. If you, you know, <laughs> I did a funeral, oh my goodness, 20 years ago. And a really good man by the way, at least in human terms, uh, World War II veteran, and our very kindly man would help anybody he could. Everybody knew he would help anybody who needed help. And I said at the funeral, I said, you know, 
If anybody deserves to go to heaven based upon their good works, you would say that this man does, but this man will not be in heaven because he was a good person. He's in heaven because of the love of God. Oh boy, <laughs> all you know what broke out because the sons were really ticked off about that because he said, he is going to heaven because he's a good man. I'm like, no, he's not going to heaven. He's going to heaven because of God's love for him. Um, not because of anything good that he's done. The works of our hands don't get us into heaven. This is what Paul is saying here. So again, don't confuse it with this. He's not talking with the flesh. He's not talking about sin. He's talking about the works of our hands. That we think somehow we can trust our abilities to get ourselves into heaven. So it goes on. So put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. Stop trusting yourself to get yourself into heaven. Verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit are children of God. Remember, you're debtors. You're not going to get to heaven by your good deeds. So what do we have to do? He provides us an alternative. Trust in what again? The Spirit. Put it in red because... Pentecost, of course, is the season of red. The spirit is often associated with the church colors of, of red. Okay. For all who are led by the spirit are children of God. We don't trust in our hands. We trust in the gift of the God as given to us through the Holy Spirit. Verse 15, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Oh, this one has been so abused, this passage right now. You have a lot of Christians say, you know, with this whole COVID thing, you know, the Bible says we're not supposed to be afraid. And so I'm not getting a vaccine. That is not what this passage says. Oh my goodness, it's an abuse of Paul's works. Every Christian is afraid. Jesus himself was afraid. But what he is specifically talking about is how we get to heaven. Don't be afraid for your salvation. Because it's in God's care. Don't be afraid about whether or not you're a member of the family. You are a member of the family because it's a gift of your parents. You're debtors to them. You're never going to pay it back. Stop worrying about it. You put your trust in the fact that God loves you, that the Spirit is the giver of this life. Okay? Trust that. This is why we shouldn't fear. It's not about fear about, yeah, I'm concerned about getting COVID. Now I've got the vaccine. But that doesn't make me a bad person. That's not what the Bible is talking about here. It's a spirit of fear that puts us in slavery, that we're afraid that I haven't done enough to get to heaven, so now I try to work my way to heaven. Let go of that fear. That's the only fear that Paul is talking about here. So Christians who use this passage to bash you over the head because you went and got your vaccine, and so you must be a person of fear, and we're supposed to not be people of fear. They're misusing Paul's book. That's not what Paul is saying. All right. He's saying don't fall back into slavery, this idea that somehow you have to earn your way to heaven because that puts you in bondage. You will never do enough. You will always be a debtor. Okay? He goes on, he says, don't fall back into that fear that you have to do something to get to heaven. You've received the spirit of adoption. You're children. Children don't earn their place in the family. It's a gift. So when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. We can come to God with that very intimate phrase, Abba, it means daddy. Okay? We, can, we are like little children, daddy. You don't earn your debtors. You'll never earn your way in the kingdom of heaven. Let it go. It's a free gift. We can come to God and say, Daddy. Daddies don't ask us to pay for the privilege of being a part of a family. 
It's a free gift. So if your children, Paul goes on, your heirs, your heirs, you're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Ooh, there's a lot here. The point of this lesson, though, is to set you free from this bondage that you somehow have to earn your way because we Christians, we are so good at putting guilt upon people, guilting them over and over and over again about all the things that they have to do and all the things they fail to do. Yes, we're debtors. So what? Big surprise. So are you. But the good news is we don't get to heaven by paying this debt. We get to heaven because of the gift of God. So let go of this idea that there's something that you need or have to do. Stop living according to the flesh, this desire to earn your way to heaven. Live as, instead in faith that you belong in the kingdom of heaven because you've been adopted by God. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these children that are listening. I'm hoping that they are feeling secure in their relationship with you. They have been adopted by the Almighty God. Yes, they're debtors. We're always debtors to our parents. But they don't count that against us. So help us to overcome this burden, this slavery, to this idea that there's something that we must do to get to heaven. Instead, let us be set free so we might be children of God. We trust in your spirit that we are who you say we are. We are your children. And for that we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord's blessing be upon you and give you his grace and peace now and forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit we pray.